Welcome to the Dealmaker's Coffee Break. I'm Asaf Raz. Let's go. So after a short break, um, welcome to another episode of the Dealmaker's Coffee Break edition, um, our short and sweet episodes. And now are back after our break with Lupe Chow, who's the Investor Relations Executive at Crown Capital. Um, she has some amazing stories to share. Um, yes, she was in the military. Yes, she acquired a $15 million real estate uh, asset while serving in the military. That's a story for the end. Sorry for, for ruining the surprise. Uh, but yeah, Lupe, please take it away. Tell us about yourself. Our listeners are eager to hear about you and your history, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, good morning and welcome. Um, I mean, welcome uh, to the audience and thank you for having me. Um, so, um, like you said, I am in the military. I am still in, uh, currently still on active duty um, here in D.C. Both my husband and I are um, still on active duty. Um, I have about 21 years in at this point, and my husband has over 30. So, wow. um yeah, and you know, that is really one of our main motivation. Uh, uh, we started this real estate about five years ago um, as a way to kind of setting up for our next chapter, you know, um, as we are transitioning from the military career to something else, right, next. <laughs> so, but but the idea is to be... Um, have more control of our time as you know right being in the military you really have very little control so even less than mm -hmm. you know any other job so with deployment tell me, tell, tell me about it tell me yeah. about it in israel we have to go to the army so i remember i remember how it feels like yeah i mean everybody uh who's working nine to five um i i think you everybody is you know, devoting a lot of hours to to their job, right? But with the military, you also have deployments and a lot more time away from home. Um, so, you know, after 20, 30 years of that, right, um, our intention is to have more time back, uh, really be able to um, relax and do the things we want to do after a very... Um, you know, a very demanding career. So uh, one of the main reasons why we started in real estate. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. So, um, I mean, you have a very interesting history as to how you went into real estate. And I think one of the most interesting questions is how, like, how do you, are you, you're still actively serving. And I, when I look at your LinkedIn, you have so many other positions and in investing as well. You've done this for years. How do you do everything? Yeah, so we have done it for about five years. Uh, you know, I still consider myself, uh, you know, a new investor. I'm learning every day. And of course, there are people out there who's, you know, who's done this for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, yeah. But how we got started um, really uh, was we sold the house prior to like five years ago, right? Like neither one of us like even look at real estate or interested, it's just really not a thing like we were, I guess, aware of, you know, uh, at the time. We sold the house in California because uh, we were getting moved to D.C. and we want to buy a home here. Uh, we luckily made a lot of money from that transaction, right? Um, but we had that house for almost 10 years and we were really hands off. Um, you know, we were one of those people like, you know, kind of maybe a little scared, intimidated, you know, um, when it comes to real estate. And I know for me, I was just happy somebody's paying my mortgage because I had a renter and I don't really have to worry about it. That's like all I asked for. <laughs> never really um, check on the value or, you know, raise the rent like the entire time. Mm -hmm. But we decided to sell. We actually made um, pretty good money from that sale. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a light bulb moment, right? And it's like, huh, there's something going on with the real estate that we should part. Back in the uh, Yeah. So yeah. that was the initial capital we had um, to put down for our first rental properties. And then we started out in residential. We bought a few 
single family homes um, and a couple of duplexes. Uh, you know, that's where we started. Of course, uh, you know, the rest is history. Yes, yes, it is, and and um, and I, I'm I'm really interested in what Crown is doing. I know you guys are focusing on um, uh, multifamily today, right? Mostly, um, so. With the specific times, with the whole interest rate situation, everything is a little bit more expensive. The market is a little bit unstable. Um, with those changes, what is your investment strategy today? And, and how is it more maybe unique or different um, than anybody else? Obviously, if I would be an investor to ask you that question would be um, very relevant. Um, and my the, the and I'm trying to understand mostly like how did you change that strategy? How did it evolve um, throughout the past year? Yeah, I would say that our strategy, you know, number one focus right now is capital preservation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the priority is, uh, you know, we, we never want to lose investors' money, right? So we are very conservative, especially now with today's interest rate um, in our underwriting um, you know, we take all that into consideration, uh, the interest rate, the cap rate, and just the market condition in general. But uh, we do um, put great focus on capital preservation. Uh, I think in today's market, um, you know, the priority is, of course, not to lose money. And then if you make money, it's great. It's like gravy. Uh, we look at uh, reasonable return, you know, um, like 7 to 8%. But we're definitely not selling you things we cannot deliver uh, at this point. And even that, it's been very challenging. We have not, um, we, we, we look at a lot of deals, but we have not um, had one we really feel we should go for. Um, mm -hmm. We have been, the deal flow has been slow. And as you, you probably already know, right? Like uh, we are looking at a lot of deals, but n most of them, are not like pencil yeah. off. Yeah. So um, yeah. We, we do have, uh, we, we did pivot a little bit to uh, off market. So we do have uh, some um, direct to seller we are working on, but you know, with those deals, it's really based on relationship, right? And then that can take some time to really kind of like, have the conversation, getting to know each other, getting to know the seller, getting to know their stories and just kind of like slow drip. Um, but we are working through some of those things. Um, we have uh, owners uh, who are at an older age. They are contemplating selling, but not like, oh, I want to sell tomorrow. But we are building those relationships and um, just being patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the... The part of relationship building, um, I think it's it's really the most important part. Specifically, right now, um, it even feels like a little bit of a tug of war between buyers and sellers. Like, who's going to be the the first one to let go? Um, just because sometimes I know that the the asset prices reflect what it was like six to to eight to ten months ago, right? But it doesn't necessarily reflect the value of the asset for an investor today. With cap rates, insurance rates, uh, um, and uh, uh, interest rates, obviously, right? So it's like a tug of war as who's going to do this first. And I like your um, special approach where you say, um, we're going to focus on doing uh, um, um, relationship building to find those new assets, which is pretty cool. Um, specific, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because, I mean, we have looked at plenty of... Um, OEMs, right? And as you know, the OEMs are, it's hard, it's hard to make them work, those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So you really have to kind of like go outside that box, find other sources. Yeah. So, so, so you're, you're geographically, you're focused, if I'm not mistaken, in the Sunbelt area, right? Specifically, mostly um, Texas. Am I correct by saying that? Yeah, we are in Texas. Um, and we are also, uh, another market we are uh, focused on is Atlanta. We have mm -hmm. some brokers relations there and some um, contacts there in that market. But mm -hmm. so far, we have not had any success in Atlanta. But we do love the market, so we just continue working it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good. They're good markets. Anything in the Sunbelt area, Sun area right now is is continuing to grow. So it's, um, I believe, it's a great place to invest in. Um, 
specifically in your position, because you run all the investor relations, um, what has changed with how investors react to, uh, to the market, right? Like what are the things that you're seeing that are special or unique to investors that you've been talking to? I think I get like two, 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 two extreme, right? Like, so one kind, one, one type of investor is they really want to deal. Um, they have capital they want to place. Um, they kind of like getting a little impatient. You know, they want to know when, when do you have something else to offer? You know, when's mm-hmm. the next deal? Um, so it is, um, it is challenging to keep people waiting. Um, a lot of times, you know, you will. It's it is what it is. You will lose the investor just because uh, they're ready to invest, and if you don't have something at the moment, you know they may go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, another type is uh, they kind of really pull back. They pull back. Uh, they just didn't really want to do anything right now. They want to put their money into the money market or savings account. Um, just something very very safe. And I get it. I get it. So this is what I see. <laughs> This is what you're feeling right now, and yeah. any um, and, and any um, any particular story that comes to mind um, that happened maybe lately or in the past few months, um, they want to share with us. Yeah, so I had this one particular investor. You know, um, I helped her to set up her self-directed IRA account. Uh, well, that in itself it was a long process because the type of investment she had and this and that, right? So it took us like a couple of months to get that set up. Um, when, when it was finally ready to go, she was so excited. It was maybe about, I think January, February this year, you know, it took like four or five months to get everything like straightened up. Right. And then have her self-directed IRA ready to go. So when her account was set up, she was like, I'm ready to invest. Like now I want to put my money into something. We didn't have anything because we just closed the property last, last year in December. She was trying to get it you know, on that one, but you know, her account wasn't ready. So when it was ready, the property has closed and she's been kind of asking me just every week, is there anything, is there anything? So, but so far we have not had anything, you know, that I'm able to offer her. And uh, yeah, it's really, you know, keep her engaged, you know, keep her posted on what we're doing. Uh, We're doing a lot of that. That's a, Sometimes, uh, we said it before in the episode, but sometimes relationships mean more than anything else. Um, so that's a smart move. I love that. Um, so, so before we end the, um, the episode, obviously we reviewed your history and everything about crime capital. Um, there is one spot at the end of the episode, which I call a shameless plug. I leave about one to two minutes for that. And the shameless plug is literally what I say it is, right? It's it's just a place for you to shamelessly talk about um, your next opportunities, talk about current investments, um, share what you're working on today. Where are some places people can find more information about Crown Capital and even reach out to you? Um, it's my 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 shameless plug uh, um, uh, mini show. So um, yeah, take it away. If you have anything specific you want to share about investment opportunities, stories where they can find you, where they, uh, and audiences, our audience can learn more about Crown Capital. This is the time and please do it shamelessly. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, like I say, right, like the deal flow has been slow. So one thing we started doing was um, to start offering more education opportunities, especially for our passive investors. You know, we want them to be educated. So, and also for the active, you know, we also started looking at, okay, how can we help other, you know, people who want to get into multifamily. So so we are doing a webinar every other week on Tuesday. That's 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Um, so that is uh, for anybody, you know, just multifamily in general, real estate in general, just, you know, make sure we are keeping up with, you know, educating ourselves and learning. Uh, so please join us. Um, another thing we're going to... Where do you sign up for the for the webinar? Yeah, so all the information is on our website, uh, which is www.crowncapitalcorp.com. You will be able to find the webinar information and also the masterclass we are launching here in September, first early part of September. Um, That is more geared toward active investors who want to be, 
more hands on, and we are also um, launching the master class for that. Mm-hmm. So while the deal is slow, you know, we need to sharp our pencils, right? Yes, that's true. No, and also, I think the um, education is the perfect preparation for the next deal or the next uh, capital raising. So it's definitely something I can see a lot of people doing. But specifically, also, you know, when I talked to Noel, uh, he was he was my first episode of the season. Um, I remember the energy and everything that was like, he was super into it. It was super energetic. And one of the things that I liked the most about Crown Capital is the education piece. And, 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 and I'll, and Lupe, I'm going to also, I'm going to talk about in your education piece, the, uh, uh, Crown Capital has webinars and blog posts and a podcast and an ebook, um, that any passive investor can learn from the, the content is great. I do recommend to to go to the Crown Capital website. It's crowncapitalcorp.com. And then you can go to the education piece and find everything there. Yes, please um, join us if you are available and just join us. Let's connect and and see where it goes. Perfect. Amazing. Amazing. Ilpe, I really appreciate the time. I know it was super quick, but there's a lot of value in this episode and I loved it. Um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna launch it very soon in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much uh, for joining us, and thank you for providing so much insight to our audience. Thank you. Short, short and sweet is the best. Thank you for joining us. Check out more episodes on the Dealmakers podcast available on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, and Agora's website at agorareal.com/podcast. See you in the next episode.